Hello there, this is Welsh ASMR 82. Hey, how you doing? So, I'm going to do a long-awaited results video. And I just, this is my landing page on the FootMob app. Lots of you, I get so many comments asking me about the app. It's brilliant, it's free, they don't pay me to say that, I just love it. It's my favourite one, and I use it every day to check on the results. So that's the app. And this is an ASMR video, that's why I'm talking quietly to help you fall asleep. But if you want to interact with the video and write a comment, please do tell me how your team did this week. And if you're happy, if you're sad, clap your hands. Okay, so <laughs> I'm unhappy because my, one of my team, Spartak, lost the derby to Zenit 2-1. But at the minute, 51 minutes in, we can see Man City are beating Aston Villa. So, what we usually do in this video, we'll come back to that scoreline later, maybe we'll be there for the last couple of minutes of the match. So, what I usually do is I start with the Premier League, go through all of last, last weekend's results, talk about the table, uh, which players are doing well, and then we carry on. I'm going to try and do as many without making this video an hour and a half. So I will be skipping some leagues. I did listen to your recommendations and I've added the Moroccan Botola Pro. So we will be looking at that before the end of the video. So check that out at the end. And yeah, I can't look into detail in every single um, uh, league, but I will do my best. So stick around. I'll try if I get a chance to put timestamps in. So look up for those if I manage to, but I'm doing this all rush rush. As usual. Okay, Premier League, let's go. Um, Arsenal, until the Man City match is over, are top. I know, actually, they are top anyway then. Oh, but Liverpool have got a game in hand. Liverpool must play, like, tomorrow then? Thursday the 4th. Yeah, tomorrow. I'm recording this on Wednesday. They're against Sheffield United, who are bottom, so I imagine. But then they've got the big derby. So... Uh, Arsenal are top for the moment, Liverpool are second, Man City are third. It's a very exciting title race. What was not exciting was the Arsenal-Man City match. We'll talk about that in a second. It was a complete ball fest. Um, Aston Villa in fourth, Tottenham, who missed their chance to go fourth, as usual. So frustrating. And then a little bit away from them is Man United. West Ham seventh, Newcastle eighth, Brighton ninth and Wolves tenth make up the top. Chelsea down in 12th, um, Everton out of the relegation zone is 16th, Luton, Burnley and Sheffield United. So we had a little sneak peek and we saw that Arsenal won earlier on to go top, so Udegaard scored with Hashioka on goal as well. And Brentford Brighton was a nil-nil as well. So last weekend so many years so many games have happened since then okay um saturday newcastle in that brilliant game against west ham they were winning with isaac and then they were losing like uh 3-1 and then isaac scored again and barnes scored two so it was 4-3 right at the end so exciting match no never a boring game if for newcastle fans Bournemouth, Everton, 2-1. Coleman with a, an own goal, unfortunately for him, on the 91st minute. Chelsea could only draw at home with 10-man Burnley. Oh, gosh. Goal ruled out. Oh, Vincent Company got sent off, the manager, as well as Asignon. And, uh, yeah, it must be quite frustrating to be a Chelsea fan this season. Let me know in the comments. Uh, not on them. Drew with Crystal Palace won all. Wood scoring again in Mateta. Uh, Sheffield United managed to get a draw with um, Brereton and Diaz, the Chilean international. Well, he didn't get picked from the last camp and the manager of Chile said he's not bothered to learn Spanish because he qualifies through... Um, I can't remember who in his family is Spanish, um, Chilean, but... He can't speak Spanish, so um, he does play really well for them, and now he's scoring goals in the Premier League as well, 
But yeah, the controversy is that he isn't getting picked by his international manager at the second because even though the, the fans apparently love him for the Chilean national team, because he hasn't taken steps to learn Spanish. So three all there. Uh, Tottenham beat Luton. Um, another, well, I'm quite pleased as a Welshman, another assist by Brennan to come on um, and do that. Luton played really, really well, though, I have to say. I saw the um, the match, or at least I saw the highlights to the match. And, um, yeah, Luton were good for their money. They went ahead, deservedly so. And actually probably should have scored. They missed a sitter, didn't they? Aston Villa beating Wolves 2-0. Uh, Diaby and Konsa, so their fantastic season continues. Almost certainly going to get Champions League, I want to say, because technically fifth place could qualify is a strong chance so even if they don't get fourth they should still get champions league and brentford man united oh god look at that mount 96th minute and in 99th but i was reading about it and apparently um there was no way that um brentford should have lost that match um so when mount scored the, the person who wrote whatever I was reading, said that it was unfair on Brentford, it was a draw. The match chances they pointed out were insane. 31 shots. How does a team like Brentford get 31 shots on goal against Man United? Can you imagine Alex Ferguson <laughs> allowing 31 shots in like a month? But in a single match, that is insane. They need to sort that out. Um, Liverpool beating Brighton 2-1, Diaz and Salah cancelling out Welbeck's early lead, and then the ball fest of the century, 0-0. I did watch it, and um, it was not a good advertisement for Premier League football, I'll be honest with you. It was so boring. But it was just, um, you, you couldn't afford to lose it. As much as they were saying that they want, Arsenal would have come there with a mentality that they needed to win to um, put Man City out of a little bit after the running for the league they couldn't afford to lose and so they there was only so many risks that they could take and then midweek results Newcastle Everton won all and Nottingham Forest surprisingly beating Fulham 3-1 Fulham are basically doing well on their home form this season I think away from home they're doing quite badly Bournemouth beating Crystal Palace thanks to Clavert Burnley drawing with Wolves, so two draws in two for Burnley, and then Zuma cancelling out uh, Brennan's early goal, one all, West Ham, Tottenham in the derby. Possession dominated by the away side, but it doesn't matter because they didn't get the win. Still 2-1. Okay. So that is the Premier League Championship. Obviously, <laughs> some of you wanted me to mention that a certain fixture happened just before the international window when I was ill and in bed, and it was that one. <laughs> um, yeah, so that happened. A small, a small bit of joy for my team this season. And, um, but to be honest with you, I would have swapped that for a win against Poland in the Welsh match. So, Cullen and Lowe with the goals, where Swansea dominated the match, um, and perhaps should have scored more. Uh, missed a penalty as well, didn't we? So yeah, it was total domination against a Cardiff side that at the point in time, they've lost a couple of matches since, but they were playing brilliantly at the time. So, um, yeah, I think both teams should finish mid-table this season, then regroup in the summer. And I think the signals are there that they both want to push for promotion next season. So that would be really exciting for Welsh football. Um, I'm also paying a close attention to uh, Wales FC this year, which is Leeds. Uh, Dan James scoring there in Wales, uh, Wales. Leeds win over Millwall, which I actually watched live to nil. I'm enjoying watching Leeds this season. They're playing lovely football. Okay, let's look at um, Monday's results then, because they, well, they played two 
match days in you know, over bank holiday weekend. So Friday, we can see Leicester actually lost to Bristol. Mehmeti with the goal. Um, Sunderland beating Cardiff in the capital 2-0. Norwich beating Plymouth 2-1 with the American sergeant getting a goal, Whitaker, ex Swansea player for Plymouth, having a fantastic season. Why did we sell him? Sheffield Wednesday uh, getting a draw with Swansea. Lowe scoring a second game in a row. Ipswich beating Blackburn, I believe at the time to go top of the table, with that Leeds draw um, on the 85th minute with Joseph. And then on Monday, Leicester beat Norwich 3-1. Even Jamie Vardy getting on the scoreline. Cardiff winning away to Coventry, which is no easy feat. Kitching with two own goals and unusual. Middlesbrough beating Sheffield Wednesday 2-0. Bristol getting another win. This time with uh, Wells scoring against Plymouth, 10-man Plymouth. Blackburn with the result of the round, I think, 5-1 away to Sunderland. Not easy at all. Swansea losing at home to QPR, despite all of the possession. No cutting edge up front. Um, Ipswich won against Southampton, 3-2, with a 97th minute goal. And Leeds beating uh, Hull, 3-1, Dan James scoring again. So let's see the, see the table. So Ipswich are still top, Leeds second now. Leicester slumping down to third. Don't tell me that they're going to blow it. That would be unbelievable after how long they spent at number one and so how far ahead they were. I think those eight losses have come since Christmas, right? So Southampton are fourth, West Brom are fifth, and Norwich are up to sixth. Wow. Coventry, Preston, Middlesbrough, Hull, and then Cardiff, Bristol were having a bit of a twilight at the end of the season. Sunderland in 13th. Swansea 15th, 47 points, 27 above the relegation zone. Such a competitive league. Um, Huddersfield in the relegation spot, surprisingly. Sheffield Wednesday there and Rotherham as well. Okay, we'll have a glance at League 1 and 2. So Pompey, sorry, yeah, Pompey still top. Portsmouth um, with Derby second. Down the bottom are Carlisle, so not much changed in that particular table. League 2, Stockport and County top, Mansfield 2nd, Wrexham in 3rd on goal difference. they in between 2nd and 3rd each week, good for them. Newport mid-table and 13th, and down the bottom Colchester and Forest Green. Okay, Women's Super League. I think they've got their international matches, international window for the European qualifiers this week, so no matches there. Oh yeah, there were matches on the weekend though, so ooh, Liverpool losing at home 4-1. Uh, Manchester United winning against Everton 4-1 as well. And Arsenal winning away at Aston Villa. Bristol are still bottom well away from West Ham, but Man City are top with Chelsea second and Arsenal third. Okay, let's go to Italia. Inter are still top. AC Milan doing well. Juve are slipping up a little bit. They need to be careful. Only two points ahead of Bologna, who are having this amazing season. Um, and to Thiago Motta. And Roma lost points, so they um, have got a little bit of a gap now between themselves and fourth. There is a chance that fifth might get Champions League football, of course, but I don't think so because um, most of the Italian teams are out of Europe. I think Roma would have to probably win the Europa League anyway, which would automatically guarantee them a Champions League point, so it disregards the five spots anyway. I don't think it would go down to the sixth team. I don't think it works like that. I'm not sure whether it was the first year. Uh, Atlanta in 6th, and Lazio in 7th, Napoli the champions down in 8th, Fiorentina have dropped a little bit, they were much higher there in 10th, Empoli Sassuolo, surprisingly, and Salernitana down the bottom. Matches over the weekend were, um, Napoli losing at home 
to Atalanta, Miranchuk, Scamacca and Cope Mainers, yes, Scamacca scored West Ham, fans, Genoa, Frosinone won all, Torino beating Monza 1-0, Lazio beating Juve, 93rd minute winner from Marusic, Fiorentina losing home to AC Milan, Duncan with the goal for the home team, but Rafael Liao with the winner. And then Bologna beating Salini Sana 3-0, Orsolini, brilliant player, got a goal, Cagliari, Hellas Verona won all, Sassuolo Udinese won all, Roma couldn't beat a very plucky Lecce team who arguably probably should have won the match. Excellent performance from um, Gallo, who I read today were rumoured to be interested in buying as a long-term replacement at left-back, being that Spinazzola is probably going to leave for free at the end of the summer, and Inter beating Empoli 2-0, goals from Di Marco and Alexis Sanchez, the old, the old boy. Serie B, let's have a quick look. Parma um, are well ahead at uh, in, in the top spot. Como, hmm, in second, that's, I didn't see that happening. Venezia in third, Cremonese, Catanzaro, Palermo, Samp and Brescia in the promotion spots, but Spezia down in the relegation playoffs to Nana, Ascoli, Ferrampi and Lecco. Let's talk Bundesliga then, guys, because it was a big weekend in the Bundesliga. We'll look at the table in a second. Um, so Saturday, Leverkusen with that dramatic. My friend was actually at the match. He was, it was his birthday and he wanted a city trip. So he thought, I know, he's a big Liverpool fan. He said, I'm going to go to Leverkusen. I've never been to their stadium. Got tickets. Apparently the tickets were like 20 euros. Like, can you imagine trying to get into a Premier League team, particularly the top Premier League team for 20 quid? That would never happen. Um, so amazing prices well done, Germany. Leverkusen were losing at home to Hoffenheim um, and then 88th and 91st minute to get the 2-1 which is very important for the following reason there's another big match going on here Freiburg winning away to Mönchengladbach 3-0 Frankfurt, Frankfurt drawing with Union Berlin Leipzig with Mainz 0-0 Werder Bremen losing home to Wolfsburg 2-0 goals from Lacroix and Meyer two red cards as well for the two green teams and then the big one der classico so the highlights so <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second at and ryerson with the two goals lovely goals i think both across the goalkeeper and it wasn't yeah it was um, ulrich in goals and he did not have a good game dyer didn't have a good game surprise surprise the big surprise really was that Kane didn't have a good game. He basically missed about two open goals. Um, yeah, shot accuracy was zero. Um, and it says expected goals at 0.77. One of them was an absolute sitter. Very difficult game for him. And it sort of, several talking points from that. It's... You know, it's kind of funny in a way. Poor Harry Kane, you know, he's gone to Bayern Munich and it looks like Bayern Munich aren't going to win a trophy this year. So it's like he's cursed, bless him, on one hand. But on the other hand, it does... A lot of the comments I was reading on the um, on this video, which is the... Um, I think it's the Sky... Oh, no, I'm not sure, actually. I saw it on the Sky Sports um, YouTube channel. And a lot of the comments were saying, oh, look... Harry Kane is magnificent, but in those big matches, he, he goes missing. You know, think about the England-France match um, in the World Cup against Italy in the European Championships. Um, loads of different games where, you know, he should have stepped up, particularly as the captain and as the one of the best strikers in the world. But he just doesn't seem to... He seems to shy away in these big, big matches. So, um, yeah, I think... He can score 33 goals a season if he wants to, but if he can't win them the big ones, is he value for money? Let me, let me know in the comment section. Augsburg, Cologne, one all. Stuttgart, Heidenheim, three all. With a red card. Undav with a 98th minute equaliser for the home team. Girassi scored again. 
and lastly Bochum, Darmstadt, two all. So that means Leverkusen are 13. 30, no, not 30, that's 30, if they wish. 13 points ahead of Bayern Munich. So Bayern, I don't think they can win the championship now, to be honest. Stuttgart are chasing that wonderful opportunity of Champions League football. It'll be so big for them. And remember, they nearly got relegated last season. If I click that button, we can see that last season they were in the relegation playoff spot. So they nearly went down. And this year they're chasing Champions League. And it's looking increasingly like it's going to happen. They're seven points ahead of Leipzig in fifth. Frankfurt in sixth. And then down the bottom, Mainz, Cologne and Darmstadt. And Dusseldorf are in third. Holstein Kiel in second and St. Pauli in first. Hamburger still chasing as are Hanover. And at the bottom Kaiserschlauten, very shocking. Hansa Rostock and Osnabrück. On to Turkey in Gala. Two points ahead, so they're squeezing a little bit ahead of Fenerbahce in this two-way. Look at the 30 points difference between second and third. And then Besiktas, you know, trying to get European football after a bit of a weird season for them. A season in which they basically, like, sacked half their foreign players, accusing them of being lazy. Um, they still have quite a few, but yeah, they got rid of quite a lot of different players. How is that way Ante Rebic is these days? Oh, Abu Bakr is on the books still, but I thought he was accused as he played much matches. March, he played in a friendly. Oh, he is playing though, just small amounts. Okay, so. Um, so, results. So Sunday we saw Gaziantep lose to Rize Sport 3 1, Atai Sport beat Samsung Sport 3 0, Kasim Pasha losing home to Galatasaray 3 4. They had, it's a local derby because Kasim Pasha is in Istanbul, I believe. They had a red card as well. Um, and. Yeah, two goals from Icardi and an own goal from him, so he had a pretty busy game. And then Fenerbahce, hmm, beating, so that's second place beating third place. 3-2. Fred with two goals. Yes, Man United fans, that Fred. Istanbul Sport losing home to Rize Sport 4-1. Antalya Sport drawing with Ankara Gucu on all. Galatasaray beating Atay Sport 1-0 with Maro. Icardi, Alanya Sport beating Gaziantep 3-0, and then today Siva Sport beating Karen Gümrük 1-0, Fenerbahce beating Demir Sport 4-2, Balotelli playing for Demir Sport, uh, Jekyll being man of the match and scoring, uh, Kayseri Sport losing home to Kasim Basha 2-0, and Konya Sport losing home to Trab 3-1, Trezegui, Visca and Funtas with the goals. Besiktas play tomorrow. Eredivisie. Oh, Eindhoven have lost a match. Their first loss of the season. When was that? Must have been when I was not doing videos because I was unwell against Nijmegen. Oh, their unbeaten season, their invincible season is over. But I can't see anyone catching them, so I think the title is theirs. Feyenoord in second. Twente in third, Ajax in fifth, Utrecht in eighth, Excelsior, Vitesse and Volendam down the bottom. Most recent results, Utrecht beating Zwolle 5-1, Heracles beating Alkmaar 5-0, Herenveen Twente underway, 98th minute is 3 all. wow. And PSV beating Excelsior 2-0 away, Junior and Bakayoko. 
and Feyenoord beating Utrecht 4-2 by Schau amongst the goal scorers. And Ajax beating Zwolle away, Klunsen and Akpom with two goals, 3-1. The Alsvenskana started back up, one game in, the champions Malmö, who nicked it on the last match day. They, let me just show you, 2023, yeah, they won it on two plus two goal difference over Elspor. So, interesting to see how they can do this season. And, obviously it's too easy to say, too early to say, but how did they do? Elspor could only draw with Vanamo, two all, ARK beat Vast. Vesteros 1-0, Modesto with a goal. Hugh Gordon won away in Gothenburg 4-1. Uh, Hecken lost to home to Mjelbu. Hammerbu beat Kalmar 3-1. Um, Broma Boikana beating Geis 4-0 away. And Noor Schöping losing a home 5-1 to Malmö. Tellin, Botheim, Nanasi, Reeks and Vecchia with the goals. La Liga. Real Madrid are top. They beat my team Athletic Club Bilbao on the weekend. Barcelona are second. Girona are in third, having this wonderful season. Atleti in fourth. Real Sociedad in sixth. Valencia in eighth. And Cadiz, Granada and Almeria. In the bottom three, Celta Vigo has moved out of it now. So, recent results. On Friday, Cadiz beat Granada 1-0. Sevilla won away to, in, in Madrid, Getafe, with a Sergio Ramos goal. 1-0. Osasuna beating Almeria 3-0. Valencia Mallorca 0-0. Barcelona Las Palmas 1-0 with a Rafinha goal. Celta Rayo Vallecano, the two just above the relegation spots, 0-0. Girona beating Rapetis 3-2. Stuani with a 92nd minute winner. Dovbik after helping Ukraine qualify for the European Championships in the summer with two goals for his team. Deport Alaves losing home to Real Sociedad 1-0. Goal from Pacheco. And like I said, Real Madrid beating Athletic Club with two goals from Rodrigo. No Vinicius Jr. as he was suspended. And Atleti beating Villarreal 2-1. Goals from Witzel and Niguez. La Liga 2. Leganes is top. Eibar in second. Espanol. Big club. In third. Down the bottom. Albacete Andorra. Amore Bieta is now off the bottom. Villarreal B is at the bottom instead. Liga and then we'll just skip through quite a few of the leagues quite quickly then. So PSG are obviously top, Paris Saint-Germain. Brest are having this outstanding season. There seems to be a, a club in every top five league this year that's having this like weirdly good season, isn't it? Girona, uh, Stuttgart, um, Aston Villa, for example. So Paris Saint-Germain top, Brest, Monaco, Lille, Nice, who have dropped from second to fifth. And Lens, Marseille outside their European spots. Hazard, Rennes, two very good teams. Lyon, however, they were bottom in about September, November, October, and now they're up to 10th. Then the bottom is dead, Lorient, Metz, and Clermont Foot. And recent results they are Lille beating Lens 2 1, Jegrova with two goals. Mets losing home to Monaco 5-2. Minamino scoring and Balagun, former Arsenal player with two goals. Lyon, Rennes, 1-0. Lorient losing to Brest. Castillo with the goal. And a red card for one of them. Clermont losing a home to Toulouse 3-0. Montpellier winning away at Le Havre 2-0. Nice losing at home to Nantes. A uh, Moffy penalty couldn't stop them losing 2-1. Strasbourg beating Rennes 2-0 and Paris Saint-Germain in the derby. Le Classique, is it called Le Classique? 
um, 2 0 Vitinha and Ramos or Ramos um, away from home in the Velodrome. That will not have gone down well with the locals. Okay, so Zenit are now back up to top spot after being around languishing in third place. My team Spartak in sixth, Ural Orenburg, Baltic and Sochi to the bottom. Scotland. It's a big race between the top two. Rangers have got a game in hand and are one point behind Celtic. Hearts are in third. Livingston down in bottom. How did Celtic do? Celtic beat Livingston 3 0. Brandon with an own goal. Bernardo and O'Reilly. Whereas Rangers, Tavernier, Dessas, and Matondo. Yeah, Matondo's goal was fantastic. I wish he'd had a bit more game time for Wales recently. 3 1 winners over Hips. Belgium. Oh, okay, so we've started the final stage then. Union Saint Gilloise are top on goal difference. Oh, actually, no, it must be head to head. No, it's not. Hmm, so now they've got minus one goal difference. But are still ahead of Anderlecht. Must be head to head in the main season then, I guess, over Anderlecht. So, Anderlecht, the top teams are still, uh, Union saint gilloise Anderlecht, a little bit ahead of Genk, Club Brugge, Antwerp, current champions, and Circle Bruges, who made it into the top six. Gent didn't, so they will be gutted. Um, Mechelen, saint Traude, Liège, Vestelon, Leuven in the playoff group. Although I can't really see three of those teams getting anywhere near Gent, to be honest. And then the relegation, Charlois, Eupa, Kortrijk, and Molenbeek. And recent results. Um, Saturday, Friday. Gent beat Standard Liège 5-1. Leuven lost home to Mechel 3-2. And Lech beat Antwerp 1-0 with a goal from Sadella. St. Traude beat Vestelo 2-0. Circle Bruges drew with Club Bruges in the derby. One all, Denki and Olsen. And Genk beat Union saint gilloise Ar Aro Cadare. Who is Aro Cadare? Aro Cadare, where's he from? Nigeria. Hmm. Never heard of him. Is he good? It's Belgium. Has Denmark started back up? Yes, they played this week as well. So, Randers beating Lumbu 6-2, Vibor beating Ridova 3-1. Oh, wow, local derby and Copenhagen lost to Brimbu. Kleiber with a 93rd minute winner. Away from home, I bet that did not go down well. Uh, Midulon losing home to Norsielon 3-2. Silkebo drawing with Aarhus 2 all. And available club winning away to Odense 1 0. Portugal, Sporting just top, Benfica second, but a gap opening up now between them and Porto in third, and Braga in fourth. Down the bottom, Porto Minense, Vizel, and Chaves. Poland, Ooh, Jagiellonia, Piawastok are top. Swask Wrocław in second and current champions Raków Czestochowa are in third. Lech in fourth. Corona Kielce, Ruch Chorzów and Łódź down the bottom. Super League in Greece. Pauk are top. One point ahead of AAK Athens and a couple in front of Panathinaikos Olympiakos down in fourth. Which is kind of surprising. And in the relegation group, Kifisia and Janina are down in the two relegation spots. On to Czechia, Sparta Prague are one point ahead of Slavia Prague. They've been after each other's necks all season. And Victoria Pilzeny are in third, Panagostrava in fourth. Down the bottom we've got, still having a terrible season, uh, Czeska Wude 
Juwice. Switzerland, young boys are top one point ahead of Servette. Are Servette still in Europe or do they just get put out? Yeah, it's a shame. Europa Conference League are getting on penalties. They had a they've had a fantastic season. It'd be amazing if they could be champions. Where were they last season then? Oh they came second last season. Oh yeah, because Ball had a stumble. And they're still not doing that great. Okay. In Norway, one game played. Same as Sweden, so Molde are top. Bran, Bran are second. Bode Glimt are third. And Rosenberg are fourth. And Northern Ireland, Lan are top. Two points out of Linfield compared to Nuri and Ballymena down the bottom. Republic of Ireland um, are eight games in. Shelbourne are top eight points already ahead of Sligo. Wow. Where did Shelbourne come last season then? Fourth. So they're having a very good start to this season. Well done to them. Dundalk are currently um, at the bottom, just ahead of Troda. On to Wales. TNS are top. Connors Key second, so no change there. And then Pontebreath are down the bottom, so no massive changes here at all. In the Championship group, um, there's no way anyone's catching TNS. They're having an invincible season. But I think they've lost their record because Al Hilal just beat their record for the most wins in a row of any football team in the world. So TNS were previously holding that record, would you believe? I think it says more about the Welsh League than it does about them as a team, but yeah. Baller and Thurk and Arvon in fourth, and Halford West fighting for European spots ahead of that group. And Romania, Stawa are top, seven points ahead of Krajowa in the championship playoff. Crazy when you think they were nine points ahead though in the regular so they're seven points ahead now Cluj are in third Rapid Bucharest are in fourth Farol Costanza in fifth and Sepshi in sixth and in the regulation spots Dinamo Bucharest and Botoshani. Croatia Rijeka are still top five points ahead of Dinamo Zagreb who are coming back Hajduk split in third Rudesh down 20 points adrift. I do not think they're going to catch up. Austrian Bundesliga Salzburg are top. Stuttgart's in second and Lask in third. And down the bottom we've got Austria Lustenau. Five points adrift of Altach. Liga Tel Al in um, Israel. We've got Maccabi Tel Aviv are top. Quite a few points ahead of Maccabi Haifa, but I think both teams are still in Europe. Oh no, they lost to Olympiacos. But in general, I think the Israeli clubs are having a good time in Europe this year. Uh, Hungary, French Faros, five points ahead of Pakshi, so they are back to top. Last time I looked, they were second or third. Debrecen in fourth, and Kishvarda and Mezo Kovesht in last place. They're both 12 points adrift of safety, though. Um, Perva Liga in North Macedonia. Struga are still top. Skupi second and Shkendia probably underperforming, I would say, this year in third. Down the bottom are Bregalnica, Stip. Which means that I think Vardar Skopje were at bottom for quite a long time. They moved up. Cyprus, Apuel Nicosia are top, four points out of Larnaca, Larnaca, Limassol are in third, Amoni Nicosia in fourth, and in the relegation group, group we've got Katokopia, Othellos, Athienu, and Zakakiu. Azerbaijan, Karabakh are top, 
after that wonderful performance against Leverkusen. Uh, quite ahead, I think the league is there, as Nefci are in second and Zira in third, with Kabbalah down in tenth. Ukraine, ah, Shakhtar Donetsk have finally made it up to first. I was thinking either Krivbas or Dnipro were going to shock and get the title, but no. And uh, Dimo Kiev are in fourth. And Minaya up down bottom. Okie dokie. Kazakhstan just kicked off. Tobol Kastanaya top. Kairat second. October third. And in the early days, Atirao, Kaisar, Kizilord, and Shechta Karagandi are bottom. Then we've got Bulgaria. Ludogorets are now top. CSK Sofia second. And down the bottom, Etar. And a couple more. Bosnia, Borat, Spania, Luka are top. Zorinsky, Moscow second. Velez, Mostar in third. And Zvi, Zeleznika and oh, Zeleznika are down the bottom. Wow. And Zvi, Ezda as well. Armenia, Putnik are top. But same points as Noah and Ararat are in third. With Shirak down in tenth. Serbia, that's it. Juventus, Vesda, Red Star are top. Partizan are second. And down the bottom are Radnik, Surdolica. Okay, so that is that from Europe. We'll have a sneaky peek at the rest, but I don't want to do a too long a video, so I'm going to try and do it in about 5-10 minutes. So, well, it's in Phoenix, the big story of the season in Australia, the side that's from New Zealand. Our top of the A-League, Central Coast are second, Melbourne third, and Sydney in fourth, and Western United are down the bottom. Wellington Phoenix beat Brisbane 1-0 with a goal from Krajev recently. And Melbourne beat Perth 2-1, two, two goals from Farner only. Sydney beating Central Coast Mariners 2-0, uh, Caceres and King with the goals. Saudi Pro League, Al Hilal on this amazing invincible season that I said. Um, they are top ahead of um, Al Nasser in second and Al Ahli in third. Al Ittihad current champions are down in fourth. Al Hazim, Al Tai, and Abha are down in the relegation spots. K League just started back up. Pohang Steelers are top. Kim Chon Sangbu are in second, which is quite a shocker. Ulsan in third. Kim Chon down in fifth. And Jombuk, even more of a shocker, with just three draws in five matches, are bottom. Surely that will stay that way for a very long. J League just started back up a couple of weeks ago. Machida Zelvia are top. Sanfrecce and uh, Cerezo Osaka are second and third. Vizel Kobe in fourth. Kashma Antlers in fifth. And at the bottom are Shona Belmare, Sagantosu, and Consadole Sapporo. And in the UAE, Awasal is top. Unbeatable season, unvincible season for them as well. Al Ain are second, and Al Shabab, Shabab Al Ahli are in third. And at the bottom are Emirates Club and Hatta. Okay, oops, missed the MLS. MLS. So Cincinnati, after six games, are also unbeaten at the top. Into Miami, having a much better season with all those big players, although Messi's injured at the minute. Columbus in third, uh, Red Bull in fourth, Toronto in fifth. And in the Western Division, LA Galaxy having a much better season. They were like bottom last season. Vancouver in second, Salt Lake third, Minnesota fourth. Recent results, Philly beating Minnesota 2-0, Colorado beating LAFC 3-2, Charlotte beat, no, drawing with Cincinnati 1-0, DC beating Montreal 1-0, into Miami drawing with New York 1-0, Suarez, yes, Luis Suarez and Martinez with the goals, Orlando Red Bulls 1-0, Toronto 
Toronto losing home to Sporting Kansas 3-1. Austin beating Ta- Dallas 2-1. Houston beating San Jose 2-1. Nashville drawing with Columbus 2 all. Salt Lake beating St. Louis 3-1. LA Galaxy beating Seattle Sounders 1-0 with a goal from Peck. Gabriel Peck. Vancouver beating Portland 3-2. Gold, Pico and Raposo. And Atlanta beating Chicago 3-0. Goals from Yakumakis and two from Tiare. Liga MX. America are top in the Clausura. They finished the Apertura in top as well. Monterrey in second, Toluca in third and Tigres in fourth. Okay, this past week we had results. Um, Tigres beating Puebla 3-2. Last minute goal from... Oh, actually, this is not last minute. But Brunette Reyes in Cordoba with three goals there for Tigres. America beating San Luis 2-1. Valdez and Rodriguez. Mazatlan beating Tijuana 2-0. Monterrey losing all to Chivas. Oh, two reds for the home team. Gerardo Arteaga and Jorge Rodriguez. So Moreno and with their own goal and Marine on the 93rd minute. Um, Pachuca losing home to Toluca, 3-2. Universidad Nacional drawing with Cruz Azul. Atlas losing home to Querétaro, 3-2. Necaxa losing at home to León, 2-1. And Juárez winning at home to Santos, 2-1. Canada hasn't started back just yet, but next month they will be back. And Honduras, Olympia are top, unbeaten so far. Motagua in second, Marathon in third, Vida on the bottom. Serie A has started, oh no, it hasn't started back just yet. Again in April we'll be back with Serie A. I'm assuming Serie B as well, yes. Liga Profesional is not back yet. That'll be back in May. Copa de la Liga Profesional is being currently played. Yes. Let's have a look. Boca Juniors beating San Lorenzo 2-1. Cavani and Marentiel with the goals. And I'm looking for River's result. River played losing to Huracan. 10-man Huracan. Masanti with a goal. And the table says Group A, Argentinos Juniors are top, Tajeres in second, Barracas in third, River Plate in fourth. And in Group B, Godoy, Cruz in top, Lanús, he was all boys in defensa, Boca Juniors in fifth, Racing Club in sixth. In Chile, Deporti- Deportes Iquique are currently top after just six games, Universidad de Chile in second, Palestino in third, Colo Colo, the big team, in fourth. Fourth, down the bottom, Cobresal. Colombia, Tolima are top. After 14 matches, joint with Bucaramanga, Santa Fe in third, Junior in sixth, America de Cali in eighth, Millonarios in ninth, and Patriotas down the bottom. In Uruguay, after six matches, Peñarol are top, Progreso are in second, good for them. Boston River in third, Nacional down in fifth, and River Plate in sixth. Danubio in ninth, Phoenix in fourteenth, but Cerro in sixteenth. And lastly, we'll look at Morocco. 24 games in, Rabat are top, 58 points. Raja Casablanca are in second and Bergani are in third. We did Casablanca are only in fifth, surprisingly. And at the bottom are Ujda and uh, Yusufia Bereshid. Latest, latest matches. Ooh, why has it gone to 2023? That's so weird. Why did he do that? Sunday, the 17th of March. Okay, so not many matches. Recently, but Widad Casablanca did beat Ujda 2 0 with two goals from Oguns, despite having 10 men. Um, this March the 21st, before this to break, okay. 
Oh, I think they may have broken for Ramadan. Oh no, it's the end of the season. Oh, is that the end of the table then? 23, 24, 24 games, 16 times 2 is 3. Oh yeah, okay. So have actually won the league. But, curiously, Raja Casablanco comes second, and they had an invincible season, so they had an invincible season but didn't win the league. That's incredible. Has that ever happened? Does anyone know of an instance where that's ever happened before? Bizarre. Okay, well, we'll keep an eye on the Botola Pro when he comes back. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, should we check on that Man City? Oh, 4 1. Foden with a hat trick. Wow. Okay. So that means the table looks like this at the end then. Man City are in third joint on point with Liverpool, but Arsenal one point ahead. Eek, so exciting. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and if you're not, join me on Patreon, uh, along with quite a few people who joined me in the last month. Thank you so much, and uh, sleep well, and see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.